Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, I have had, once again, another long and busy and stressful week. And so tonight, I decided to do something relaxing. Review pull request. So uh, that makes me weird, but I enjoy actually doing code reviews and pull requests and all of that. So I find that to be rather relaxing. So I figured tonight I would go through and just um, focus on catching up the, on the material design stuff. There's been a lot of work and questions, and I've frankly just been absent and um, ignoring it. So I do apologize. Um, unfortunately, that's sort of how it goes sometimes with open source is other things have to take priority. But uh, never fear, I'm still very committed to making sure that it moves forward. And so tonight, we move forward. So we are going to bounce and look. So uh, we'll start here because this one's an easy one. Uh, because this is an automated pull request, and so I don't have to do anything beyond put this in the milestone and uh, send it out the door. So the, all of the icon stuff get automatically generated by pipelines, and so if the build passes, it couldn't be that bad. Um, and more importantly, the um, the change requests or or the Release notes, that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, the release notes for the pack icons uh, exist in the wiki for people who haven't seen it. Um, there's literally just a, a bit here that I automatically, I just gen this up every time. So if you're curious on a particular pack icon that either seems to have moved or changed names or may look different, uh, you can just control F and search this here and hopefully find what you're looking for. So uh, I guess we got pull requests here. So F5 and the guy goes away, and I'm trying to decide where to start. I think let's go here. I Generally, I try to do things in chronological order, but I saw this one come through earlier, and it's a, it's a very simple change. It just simply removes the hard-coded font size and margin because, in general, these sh things should be coming in. Um, they should be set on the element and not necessarily set here unless there's a reason for it. And... In this case, there's not a, a great reason for this guy to have um, those things set, and those should be inherited. Uh, in general, I'd go through and write a, a little test for it, but it's not a it's not a critical item. It's a fairly fairly simple change. So we're just gonna take that, and I don't even know if it needs the any of the labels on it. Squash merge, squash merge, and um, thank you. And let's go and make sure the related issue gets merged as well. And then that goes there, and the issue gets closed out. So this was someone who made a uh, uh, call out here. Oh, I just noticed. Took a quick look as part of the assignment. Not sure if our solution works yet. Uh, I can confirm that it does. So thank you very much. And now we get into some ones that are a little bit more harder. So editor config changes. This is another fairly low risk area. Uh, let's see, indentation size and spacing. So indent size four, I believe this matches what's already in the repository. Uh, new line preferences, trim trailing white space, yes and yes. So these are also, I believe this matches what's um, inside of the repository. I believe that also matches the Visual Studio defaults. So just in case somebody's changed their Visual Studio defaults, it's, it's good to have an editor config that's explicit so that uh, somebody contributes their personal preferences don't necessarily override project preferences. So we will, we will take that as well. Let's just keep going. See, look at this. Look at this progress. Three pull requests down. And I, hang on. Three pull requests down, and then it's up in Mountain Dew. Uh, let's see. This one I know is bigger. Uh, let's see. Remove deprecated resource dictionary keys. This one I know was talked about um, on this issue because we had some back and forth on this. So, because Tyson opened this issue, asked about a suggestion of removing the secondary keys. Um, bum, bum, bum. So, effectively replacing all of these brushes 
because these are effectively being deprecated in favor of these ones, but the old deprecated brushes were still there. So we're not going to break backwards compatibility yet, but I, I want to go through and check um, because these, these will be expected to go at some point, and I want to make sure that these are... Um, that these are that these are logged here because these will be breaking changes when these things eventually do get deleted. So let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Remove brush. Verify all usages. Uh, I don't think we need to actually verify because I believe this other PR already does that. So re how about remove secondary accent brush color. Actually, I'm going to put these together because you can't really remove the, the brush without its corresponding color thing. Uh, let's see, accent foreground. Um, Same corollary here, right? You can't remove the you can't remove the brush without the color that goes with it. And we will update that comment so that people are aware of the breaking changes coming in 4.0. And let's go and check files changed. So 32 files, but I imagine these are largely a find and replace. Humid, humid, because these these ones are being are still being set by the the themes. So just be aware that those are there. The other thing that I'm aware of is that all of the tests passed, so that gives me a pretty high degree of confidence that this hasn't broken anything. At some point, I do want to go through and write um, some UI tests that just verify that all of our styles launch, right? Like verify that all of our static resources, I don't think I want this change. I think I want to leave this here for now. This change is okay. Right, we want to read from the new one, but we still want to write the old one. So I th think I want to go take that one out. Because I don't want to, I, again, I don't want to break backwards compatibility just yet. I'm going to wait for a major version rev to do that. So we're for now, we'll do this in a backwards compatible manner. Um, so let's go. Let's go and just fix that real quick. I think so. That that change there is inside of resource dictionary extensions. So let's just jump over here. Uh, let's see, collapse collapse uh, this one yes please go ahead and check it now great and then we want to go to let's see resource dictionary extensions right boom and we want to put back the, these lines here so between 34 and 36 uh, let's see, what is secondary hue dark brush is what's right above it. Secondary hue dark brush. So these go here. Boom. Uh, I think I'm going to add a comment. These will be removed in version 4.0.0. Right? So we'll leave, again, I'm going to leave them here. We're not taking them out of everywhere, but we are, we are prepping for deprecation. Mildly disappointing that there's not a good way of flagging obsolete um, items in XAML, which is a bit of an issue. Uh, let's see. Uh, putting back the setting of obsolete brushes to maintain backwards. Uh, how about back compat? So for people unfamiliar, that's just backwards compatibility shorthand. I'm lazy, so we'll 
commit push and then I'm going to be a little patient and let the the build system do its thing right so this I should see let's see so that guy's viewed 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 down 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 I'm now wondering do I need to deal with these ones so a lot of these this is an unfortunate area of the code because we've got these recommended themes that are slightly different um, than if you use the bundled ones. So if you were to compare RGB codes, there are a few brushes that are different. Um, and these are technically generated. I'm wondering if it's worth fixing the generation. I, I don't know. I, we're slowly moving to the point where making these generated is not nearly as valuable as making the, the other ones work appropriately. So I'm inclined to just not touch them. We'll, we'll leave those there. Uh, so that line removed, that line added, great, and we switch that. So that all looks good. We'll put an approve on this, and then we'll, we'll circle back to it after the CI has had its, had its fun. OK, uh, fixed time picker issue. Let's take a look at this one. I think I looked at this. Uh, the date part is selected time will be date time. It should be today. And if I recall correctly, there was, yeah, there's a UI test in here, which is great. I, I very much like, so thank you very much. I, I'm, I'm going to probably butcher this name. Bum Papapo. Thank like, I, like, I, he's, uh, he or I guess or she has also been going through and contributing back to my XAML test library, which I, I very much appreciate. I did decide to go a slightly different way for the, the key event handler stuff. I decided to just bite off the whole elephant and do the, the key simulations. Um, but there is an issue on my pipeline with when you simulate the keys um, – something about focus doesn't allow the window to get set back and I haven't been able to diagnose it yet so but this is this is absolutely awesome right like I, I love seeing this so click button blah 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 uh, so this is here oh so these are just helper methods for the the time picker got it so get selected time set selected time which is great. I mean, mild. There's there's mild formatting here on this file, but that is that is not a big deal to me. Nothing that would stop me from just taking it in. Uh, let's see, and then so some uh, data driven tests. So with X unit inline data, we'll run the test multiple times, calling it with these values for each of the parameters. So year, month, day. It is interesting that the language is being set to the US. It doesn't shock me that we probably should do this because there are there are because of the way um, date times works and calendars, not setting the locale could be very problematic on the pipelines, which are gonna be running effectively invariant or UTC. I don't remember the they've got a very defaulty culture when you run them out on the um, build agents. And even included this. So this guy here, um, all this does is if the test fails, it'll capture a screenshot at the uh, at the time the assertion fails. Yeah. So this is using a little bit of the older API. So I'll have to update this once I get the XAML test stuff figured out. This is really good code. I these tests cannot be. Uh, Oh, oh, and, oh! Wow! So he's already gone through and added an additional test. This is this is beautiful. So there's this idea of being able to send key. This is effectively the the problem that I'm trying to solve. Right? Is wanting to be able to write tests where you you send a bit of text. Right? So this is very similar to like the Windows form send keys. Um, 
that you'll also see get used in other places um, as well as this guy here. But there is something something wrong with my implementation or the Win32 stuff, but only on the pipelines, which is what is confusing me to no end. Um, effectively getting focus to move back to the, the window. The first test works fine. It's all the subsequent tests that don't work fine, which is a bit frustrating, but that is, I approve. So what is the actual change? So selected time gets date time min value. Okay, so that's that's fine. This is just that is just fixing an existing test. Uh, okay, so time picker text box. Let's get a little more context. Where are we? So when the text changes, we're in the callback, and if the text box has been set, which uh, effectively checking has my template been applied. So if people aren't familiar with knowing when a controls template is applied. Go watch last week's stream. I should really be putting links somewhere. Go back one. Um, so let's see. Time picker update text box text. So this looks like a simple helper method. So type cast it to a string. Coalesce null values into empty string. Okay. Let's get a little more context down here as well. So on lost focus, we separate out the is time valid into rather than just an inline here with the curly braces. Uh, let's see, it pulls current text apart. So this is this is something subtle um, that I don't know if people always catch, right? So accessing a property, like reading the text property, is a method call. So by pulling this into a local, um, it guards your code against something else changing that property. So if you were to do textbox.txt twice, something theoretically could change that value between the first time you invoke the property and the second time you invoke the property. So pulling this into a local guard you against that. Now, that's general C sharp. In this specific case, I don't think that's actually possible because this is a um, UI event and to manipulate the text property would be to manipulate a UI element and you can't do that from a, a from a different thread other than the UI one, which is what this guy's running on. So I don't know if it's actually possible to hit that case ever here, even with multi-threading. Um, but worth understanding that that's that that's what's going on here. So checks is time valid, still does the same. Well, slightly different. So rather than calling set current value, it calls set selected time, and then update text box if needed. I think that was the same as up here. No, this is just update text box text. So I've got three methods I want to look at. Here's the first one. Update the text in the text box. So it pulls the caret index. Great. Assigns the text and then reassigns the caret index. I'm surprised this isn't doing a little bit of math, but I'm also fairly confident that the caret index, like for example, if the text got shorter and the caret was at the end, but I'm fairly confident that the text box handles that and we'll just push it to the end. Um, so update text box if needed. So last text. So if the current text is equal to the last text, uh, get date time to string. So it grabs the the current selected time property and converts it to a string. And if that is different, okay, so this check is to eliminate calls to here if we can be reasonably confident they aren't going to change. And then this call also checks against last text to only call update text box if necessary. Okay. Uh, set selected time. Oh, so this is interesting too. So this is leveraging uh, what's called uh, covariance or contravariance. Um, so the idea being that it's explicitly calling out that this parameter is only on the way in. This is a, a little bit superfluous in C sharp to specify in since that's the default versus specifying out or ref are the other options. Um, but that is, that is a thing. I, I, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Um, let's see, selected time. Pulls the date off, otherwise uses today at time of day. OK. 
Okay, that's fine. Let's see, current text, text box text, parse time. So this looks, so once again, it's doing the same trick with where it extracts into a local to avoid anything else being able to touch it. And because this method um, isn't in like a UI callback, I, I actually really like it here because that means if it were to be invoked by say a background thread, despite the fact that this has to be invoked in the UI thread, it does uh, lend itself well to protecting it. It also means that this lambda here, uh, because variables from outside the lambda uh, are said to be captured if they're used inside the lambda, which effectively means this lambda holds on to a reference of this local variable so that it can do this comparison in here, right? And it's better to hold on to a reference to a local variable than it is to the entire text box, which was what would happen if this guy were down here, like it used to be. So that just changed there. Set selected time, which this appears to be. Let's see, selected time, date, but it null coalesced to today versus not doing anything, right? So, and that's likely part of the bug, right? Is the null case here. If selected time hasn't been set, this is just going to default to T, which I'm pretty sure is not what we want. And then back down to there. Okay, especially given that there are so many UI tests written around this and the tests look good, I see no reason why this shouldn't be approved and merged in. And I will look to go back and revisit this after um, uh, after I get the XAML test stuff figured out for keyboard input, since it looks like those tests are already there. Uh, is there any tags needed? This isn't really an enhancement as much as a bug fix. But it feels like I kind of want to tag this because this information here I think should be captured in some release notes or at least explicitly called out that it's here. So I think I'm going to tag this with release notes so that I remember to come back and use this here. Uh, let's see. And then let's make sure the related issue is... Uh, in the milestone as well. And we will tag this guy as a bug. And we will jump back here and we will squash merge that guy in. I'm really tempted to kick a 3 1 release out very soon and just. My intent was to go from 3.1 to 4.0, but I'm wondering if there needs to be, a, or I'm sorry, a 3.2 to uh, 4.0, but I'm wondering if there should be a 3.3 first. Uh, sweet. And so this guy here is now finished. So this guy here, uh, oh, I did not put it in the milestone yet. Let's do that there. Um, and I think I'm going to also tag this guy as release notes just because the the deprecation of those things in XAML is there's not a compiler way to notify people. So I'm I'm feeling like I'm feeling like I'm just going to end up uh, just making sure I try to call it out in release notes. And if I do a three three release, that would give that would give people a little bit more time to get stuff done. Part of it was I was sort of hoping to have the 4.0 stuff prepped and ready to go for Hacktoberfest because all of those items in this breaking changes are really great entry level items for somebody to work on. Um, and so my intent was to try and make all of these Hacktoberfest items. So if people wanted to contribute, they would be a nice easy, easy entry point. So well, let's just keep going down the list. We're doing, we're doing so good just running down the list. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. We'll have fun. Okay, so this adds a closed dialog method to dialog host. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. I am curious. The dialog identifier can be null, and this thing clearly allows it. 
this looks like there so there's a comment here about this this logic here is being duplicated from effectively this this logic here as well the other thing that this doesn't do is it doesn't check verify access um, which is a bit of a problem um, because if this were invoked from a background thread that would end up throwing an exception and ideally we want verify access will throw a reasonable exception something about um, trying to access it from a background thread so you get notified of exactly what's wrong whereas down here you end up just blowing up um, with a sort of a similar thing but a less helpful error message uh, let's see you can call close no that need to check whether current session is not null I think I agree with all of these. I think the comments here are fine. I think what I'm going to do is end up circling back. So this guy's going to be tagged as an enhancement because he is um, definitely there. But I think I kind of want to see these changes. I might go and make those, but rather than changing those, I, th I think I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep working my way down. Uh, let's see here. Bo -bo -bo. Why did I put evaluation required? Can we not test this on multiple DPIs? I think I can test this. I think I brought this one up before. What is the change? What is the change to this? So this guy here, combo box pop-up. Now I need to look. So there are some files that we bring into this project that are from outside of our repository. They effectively get file linked in. And I can't remember if no, combo box pop-up is not one of them. Okay, so this adds a relative horizontal offset property. Okay, and this pulls in flow direction. And this ends up doing the math for the positioning. So what is the bug being fixed? Is this just the, is this another one of those combo boxes? Yes. I hate this. Part of me just wants to go and redo the combo box so it doesn't do the little hole in its pop-up. Because I don't know if there's a great way to do it correctly. Okay, moving on. So there's a couple of things with this one. So in general, there, there's been a guiding principle from the owner of the library that we already have a tab control style available via draggables because people have requested a tab control style for a while and it's always gotten pushed back. Now, in general, I agree. However, draggables doesn't work for .NET Core, which means we don't have a solution there. So part of me is tempted to bring that in. However, there's, I don't, so hold on, we, we need to take a look. So material design. So I don't know if this style here actually matches the spec, which is what, because that, so I'm fairly confident draggables was done according to the spec, at least the prior material design spec. So I'm, but I'm not sure what the current one is. Uh, so, because ultimately what we're looking for, so this one here is really what I'm after, right? Oh, look at this, tabs, navigation rail. Look at that, already cited the source and everything. So there's, yeah, see, this is sort of what I expected, where you've got sort of the hover effect, the underline, and here's a scrollable one, right? More importantly, horizontal scroll works, which is great. We can, so there's that, right? Leading icon, none, top icon, right? So this is, 
this is sort of what I this is the this is the view that I was expecting to get, which it does not appear. We might fire this up and look. I guess it technically matches these ones here, I think. Yeah, and navigation rail, this was ultimately the ones looking to come in. Right? So let us, let's go and check this one out and see, because there's a lot of work that's been done here. A lot of work. And this would be a very nice addition to bring in. So pull request 2026. Let's grab that guy. And let's let's take a look at what we got. So step one, just F5, run the demo. Let's go and look. Because it should look good in the demo. Should look good in the demo. Demo should always look good. If it can't look good in the demo, it won't look good elsewhere. Yeah, I'm not sure about the other primary ones. It's also interesting to me that this, uh, I'll, I'll be curious to look at these because these were clearly set up nicely. Uh, let's see, uh, light theme please, thank you. Okay, so let's go and look at rail, right? Let's go look at navigation rail. So this is, so in, in terms of spec wise, right, this looks really nice to me, right? I'm noticing our plus is a little smaller than what's in this. I'm curious why that is. I almost want to just bump the pack icon size up to make it match. Because this is all because this is a Yeah, that's but I like that. I like that. Floating content. So what does floating content mean? Uh, I do want to change some of these styles. So in general, a style reference should be a static resource, not a dynamic resource. Dynamic resource should only be used for things that are expected to change at runtime, such as brushes for theme changes or colors. Um, but styles in general aren't being swapped out at runtime. Styles usually contain triggers and resources that are swapped. So these styles, I probably go and make a tab one. I'm trying to understand what floating content means. What is floating content? Oh, is the button floating on top? Is that what that is? Oh, so this has a floating content. That's what that is. This button is the float. So I guess my question then is, what does floating content mean? Principles, ergonomics, consistent, adaptive, blah, 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 anatomy. Floating action button. Oh, excellent. So this was done as arbitrary content. So the material design spec oftentimes is very prescriptive about this should only ever be a button, right? And I, for WPF, I generally like to put make these content presenters or content controls. That way, people can put in whatever content they want, right? Like, it should default to matching the spec. Like, that's, there's no, that I agree with. But I don't like arbitrarily saying, well, this says it should only be a string. It should never have an icon and blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I feel like it should default matching to the spec, but give you as much freedom within that to do what you want. So do the right thing by default, but then it will, it's going to blow up and whack you upside the head if you do something uh, different. So expandable coming soon. I might also, cool mean, not coming. Um, I might end up removing this and just commenting out. I don't mind the, the visual to do's for later, but. Um, I feel like I also want to somewhat rename this to be floating action button. I want this to correlate back to down here. So this also has divider, which I assume default look and right aligned. So where is the divider five? So the divider is optional. 
it's interesting to me because it looks like doesn't look like the divider's there. And it almost looks, let's see, do I have zoom it running? Probably not. No. Let's uh, zoom it. So it looks like, if I was guessing, that that is a drop shadow and not a line. Like I realize, so the, um, yeah, because when it's selected, you don't see anything there, which makes me really suspect that that's just a drop shadow. So this guy might be a feedback thing. So container, uh, blah, 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 defaults to left, which that appears to be how it works, right? So let's see, what does this guy do? Uh, Material design, navigation, rail, tab control. Now this is sort of fine, right? Like this. So I'm very okay with. Okay, so orientation. Uh, should always run vertically along the side of the layout. For horizontal navigation components, consider using a bottom navigation. Uh, and a, uh, so don't position the navigation rail container horizontally, so don't do that. Okay. Uh, UIs for language. So why? So what is this information here? Mirroring elements. I, I assume it's going to call out the subtle difference between languages that read right to left and left to right, um, and that is definitely something worth considering. Uh, if you want to support uh, multiple locales, do keep that in mind that left to right is not universal at all, right? And that. There's been a number of bugs in this library specifically around um, languages and cultures that go right to left on their language. Or I guess, right to, not right to left on their language. Language? Alphabet. The text, the, the, when you set your culture there, um, stuff flows right to left. I believe Farsi is is one if I'm not mistaken. I know Hebrew is one that will do that um, to you. Let's see, rail designations, uh, blah, blah, blah. So these things do have the option of both icons and text. Do we show this? So I'm a little curious. I kind of want to put text on some of these too so that they are because right now, these, this is just using the header, and the header is just set to an icon. And I kind of want to do, I kind of want to do some, some labels here, right, to show off the text labels. Um, obviously not long, and don't scale them down, right? I'm not entirely sure how that plays out, but we should, we should do that. Uh, and clearly the the text and this is not something that I think we enforce right so this one they have rules around you know you shouldn't shrink the text you shouldn't do the ellipse you should do text wrapping but at all if at all possible you should do you should make the label short enough so that they don't wrap right so if you end up using a text block for this make sure wrapping defaults to true would be the recommendation uh, active icons should have sufficient contrast with the container. So do we have that? I think so, but we're also picking up a background, and I'm not... Yeah, that's... No. Uh, group alignment. So... Got it. I think what I might do... So most of this is good, but I think I think I almost want to take this in pieces. 
and see about separating things separating things apart and having some feedback on them. Uh, selected, yeah, so there are selected text labels appear only when the destination is active. And so something like this I would not see as necessarily built in to the style per se, right? Like you can I think this is probably something that gets done in the demo app to show how to do it so that people have a, a, a sample to follow. But I don't think this gets built into the base level, the base level style. Uh, let's see. So using badges, again, this is not, we already have a badge control. I, I would not, this is not something that I expect built into the style, but I would expect it to be, to have an example of it. Uh, let's see. Bottom navigation. Backdrop. Responsive patterns. Okay, so I think, I think what we're going to do is let's, let's review the code with the understanding that we're going to break this thing up a little bit into some smaller chunks, I think. Pretty sure. Yeah, we're going to break it up in smaller chunks. Okay, so there's... So everything about this seems fine. I do wonder if we're going to be setting vertical scroll bar visibility requirement to auto on everything. We should, like, auto should probably just be the default, but whatever. That's not a problem for here. So navigation rail. I am less concerned with... Well, I, I think we leave a comment here, right? Um, let's see. Styles should use, uh, let's see, static resource um, over dynamic resource. So uh, just to be clear too, the, the reason for this is dynamic resource actually incurs a, a small extra performance hit because it has to keep track of when something changes, whereas a static resource just literally straight up sets it. So be aware of that. You also get um, with a static resource uh, checking uh, if the key doesn't exist, whereas a dynamic resource is going to silently fail if it doesn't find something, which is can sometimes be problematic. So let's let's be clear about what we're recommending here. Let's just change this. Uh, static resource and styles should be about set using static resource over dynamic resource. So we'll start a review and let's just kind of work our way down through this. Though I kind of wonder if this was copied from one of the other ones which means we might have bugs elsewhere. Uh, let's see here. I think what I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, uh, similar comment uh, for the rest of the file as well. So we'll do that. All right, so there's, there's that. That's great. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I think I'm going to ignore... I, I think what I'm going to end up doing is making a list of optional things that would be cool to do, but those, but things that I think should be added to the demo, I don't see as those as blocking for merging the PR. Those can come later, but I think I want to make sure that I write them down somewhere so that if we merge those without these, I, I can convert those into to work items because those would be another great um, Hacktoberfest item. Oh. I realize I've used the word Hacktoberfest like four times. And some people might be going, hey, what is Hacktoberfest? Let me show you. So if you are interested in contributing to open source software, uh, Hacktoberfest is put on by DigitalOcean every year um, as a means of uh, getting people excited and contributing to open source projects. Uh, in short, if you uh, open up five pull requests, uh, during the month of October, you get a free t-shirt, which is great. 
um, and it's actually remarkably easy to do. Uh, typically on their website, they will put up, uh, like if you aren't sure where to contribute, they'll have a little find a project thing and you can just kind of like either filter based on your favorite programming language or whatever um, and just keep hitting refresh until you find um, issues that look interesting to work on. Um, I try to go through and make sure on all of my repos that I that I tag items. Typically what you'll find is, I'll go up and show you, is you will find issues on repos that are um, labeled with a uh, Hacktoberfest label. And the typical criteria for Hacktoberfest is really similar to Good First Issue in that it's usually an issue that's simple for anyone even new to your library uh, can work on and do. Uh, and uh, too well defined, right? There should be it should be clear what the work needs to be, um, and also if I tag something with Hacktoberfest, that is implicitly me signing up to say, hey, if you've got questions, um, especially during the month of October, I'm going to prioritize helping you uh, work through them to make sure you can figure it out. Um, so there is all of that, and you don't necessarily need to. Um, it's great if you want to sign up and get all the email notifications. Um, DigitalOcean doesn't really spam you much at all because of doing this, so don't panic about that. Um, and, the, and then the simple thing is start looking for places to contribute. Again, if, especially if you're new to open source, if you're wanting help, um, this is a great way to jump in, um, get your feet wet, and try, try some stuff out. Um, because it's all about helping new people um, get comfortable contributing to open source um, and bettering a community. So if there's a project that you like working with, um, I always tell people when they ask, hey, what, sh what should I work on? What should I build, right? Find something you like, right? I love WPF, so I like working on this material design project because I enjoy WPF. I'm weird. Um, so if, you, if something else strikes your fancy, find a project that you like um, and see if they're um, planning on doing Hacktoberfest. Uh, usually a simple test is just look at their issues and see if there's a closed items with the Hacktoberfest label. That means they've at least participated in the past and probably will again. Um, but yeah, or you know, if they've got a message board or Gitter chat room or whatever, just drop in and leave a question and ask. So I've been trying to make sure I spread the word to people uh, who may not be familiar with it that it is it is a great thing to do. So, but what do I know? I'm biased. So I do like how the color zone assist attached property is clearly being leveraged here to propagate this through. This is kind of nice. Um, the one thing I would check on this when we get to the implementation is color zone assist mode has a custom option that allows you to feed your own colors through. Right, like there's some there's some helpful enum values for you know doing your primary theme color, your accent theme color, and that kind of stuff. But I'd be very curious to make sure that the custom one also works. So if somebody wants to say no, 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 in this particular case, I don't want to use a theme brush. I want to make sure that it is fuchsia because I love fuchsia and fuchsia is wonderful. Um, just a thought. So we will keep our eye out for that. Yeah, I like the floating content with the way that this was implemented. I'm hoping that this is of type object and we'll just take arbitrary content. The fact that it's named content makes me suspect that that's, that that's the way that it works, which is great. Um, uh, we can probably omit this until it is implemented, right? I don't, I don't mind to-dos, but... In general, this kind of thing is sort of like commented code. It's it's not adding a lot of value, and it's uh, clutter stuff up until it's actually implemented. So navigation rail. Wait. Wait a minute. Navigation rail. I'm confused. I don't think this is... What's this control for? Oh, 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 oh! This is this is not a control. This is the 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 code behind for the. Okay, got it, got it. Was very confused for some reason. I thought this was a custom control. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I just saw that it was using the tab control. 
Um, I'm going to ignore the tab control page because I, I think one of my comments is going to be I'd like to take these as separate pull requests. Pretty please. Only because there's been a guiding principle of not having tab control styles. The navigation rail I'm ar arguing is a special case because currently there's a material design control that we or material design component that we can't implement without this and a tab control just makes sense. So we're going to ignore we're going to ignore those for the moment. Okay, navigation rail assist. So floating content property, it is of type object. This is just a straight up attached property. Great, great, great. I see no problems. Looks perfect. Uh, let's see. This guy comes in here. These are going to be the ones that I think we probably don't want. I'm a little... Grumble, grumble, grumble. I don't know what to do. Okay. Uh, this guy is a little big, I imagine, because he probably has a ton of stuff. Uh, let's see. I'm going to ignore the tab control one because I, I'm kind of hoping to punt that until a later one. Tab item we're going to come back to only if we need to. Tab item compact derives from it but has a different default height. Okay. Navigation rail. This is an interesting conundrum of should this be in something called tab? I, I think this file should be called tab control. But if it only contains navigation rail styles, should it be called navigation rail? So my only thought being that in general, we name this file according to the control. So button, checkbox, etc. Uh, let's leave a comment here. Uh, general we name the file according to the control being styled so I would name this file and we will because this is pretty close but tabs doesn't line up to the to the actual control and I think it might even be in the wiki docs that you can replace this portion uh, with the the name of the control, at least that's the intent. I don't, I've not actually reviewed to make sure that that's true in all cases, but that's the intent behind it. Uh, let's see. So add review comment. We'll keep going down, back back down to the bottom. So back down to the navigation rail. Uh, background set to null. That's interesting to me. ask the question is this uh, setter needed because there there is a, another option of um, dependency property unset value which would be the do you, well I guess that depends the I, I'm I, I think the background is pr probably has a default value of null to begin with Uh, we'll just leave it as is needed, right? In general, doing code reviews, you should ask questions on things you aren't sure of or don't understand. Um, so let's see. So this is the tab control. So vertical and horizontal content alignment. Vertical alignment brings the stuff to the top. Horizontal content alignment stretches. Okay. Okay. Padding is internal, so that's fine. Um, uh, let's see. Is this needed? In general, we want to allow font family to be inherited. Because typically, you'll set this once at the top of your top level XAML, whether that be a user control, a window, etc. Right? Uh, tab strip placement left. That makes sense. Because the only valid, the only valid ones that we saw here were left or bottom. And we can't really 
stop people from setting this to a different value, but we can certainly make the um, the default saying this border thickness. This makes me wonder if this. So left, top, right. Part of me wonders if that border thickness is what's setting this line. That well, we'll see. Shadow assist, shadow edges, right? This is what I expect is likely being is what's likely causing this here. So I'm a little surprised. Is this top one's background a different color? Background light gray. That's what's going on. Okay. I was just curious why this top one looked different. By making it light gray, it effectively hides the shadow. It's probably still there. Boy, I can't tell. I can't tell. Uh, but that's okay. So this is, let's see, tab grid. Got it. So it's creating a card for the tabs and then doing a color zone, vertical alignment stretch. Okay. The part that interests me is this guy's name is labeled part underscore color zone. Again, see video from last week. Um, in general, part underscore indicates something that's part of the template. Um, that the code behind for the control is expected to use. However, given that this is using a tab control, I would not expect it to be looking for something called color zone. So this, yeah, like I, it doesn't necessarily bother me too much that it's named that way, but it feels a mildly misleading. That's okay. Uh, let's see. So this guy looks up the color zone assist from its parent, specifically the templated parent, which in this case will be the tab control itself. So if you set those guys. Um, so this makes me suspect that the that the custom mode probably works just fine because I believe these are the three properties you need for custom to work. Because the background and foreground are, these attached properties are intentionally ignored um, un uh, uh, until you set the mode to custom, and then it'll pick these up. Let's see here. Uniform grid. So it puts the... Shadow assist. So it's creating a card strictly for the purpose of doing a shadow. That's interesting to me. I, it's This may be overkill. So the shadow assist stuff um, largely just leverages the WPF drop shadow effect. Uh, and th so the only advantage that it really has is it keeps a static collection so you don't end up creating a bunch of instances. But the card itself is not exactly like it's it's a fairly lightweight control, but it's not over like it feels heavy handed for something whose purpose is just draw a shadow. Because the drop shadow effect needs to be attached to something. All right, I'm a little curious why why this was done on a card and not on the color zone directly because I believe both of these are supported on the color zone. We'll come back to that. I We may answer our own question when we get far enough up. So we've got a color zone that's wrapping this content presenter which I would expect to this content presenter oh this is actually This guy here is the floating content.
is item host. So this guy here, I believe, is what's going to actually host our individual tabs. Yeah, I'm a little, this guy feels a little heavy-handed, but let's carry on. Um, I am also curious, is this, this referenced anywhere? It is. It's referenced in a couple places. So I'm going to put put forward the suggestion that this guy should actually be called All right. In general, we've been favoring. I mean, that's a that's a minor nitpick suggestion there, but uh, that's at least to match the other ones. Uh, okay, so let's take a look. So now we have the selected content. The selected content ends up in a color zone. Background null. So this appears to be unsetting the background. And I suspect that's why this color is being set here, right? Is to show that this code works. Right? Of when I set my background to a light gray, darn it, when I click here, I expect to see light gray. So I imagine that's the intent there. Uh, let's see. Let's see, so uh, I don't believe you need uh, text block foreground if uh, text element foreground uh, is set because I so text block derives from text element. So I believe this is effectively accessing a static property from a derived type. A bunch of tab strip placement ones. I mean, I suppose technically if we wanted to block somebody from putting it along the top or the right, we could just turn off these triggers. That seems mean. Probably shouldn't do that. So let's, let's check these, right? So when we're along the top, we need to set our shadow edges to the bottom and the border thickness moves to the bottom. Okay, with you so far. When we go bottom, this guy needs to dock to the bottom. Shadow edges need to go on the top. Border goes to the top. Same with left. Uh, rows, columns. Header panel. Does header panel have a what? It, what is what is this? I, I the the rows and columns property confuses me. What? I missed something. I missed something obvious. Header panel. Go up, go up. Uniform grid. Ah, uniform grid has it. Got it. That's clever. I don't use uniform grid much. So in the case of we are uh, vertical, so left or right, we're going to change the number of rows to zero, number of columns to one. It's going to lay out that way. That's that's clever. Uh, changes it so if the Tabs are on the left, shadow edges go to the right, border thickness matches the right. I think this aligns with default, which isn't a big deal. Um, tab strip placement right, edges left, same with that. Okay. Tab item, rail item. So where did this get set? Did I just miss that? I would have expected it to be in items. Oh. I don't see. It doesn't look like this is getting set. 
that's interesting. I would have expected this to get set as like an items container style. Similar, right? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see here. So what do we got? Border brush. It's going to use mid. Background. It's going to be mid. Yeah, so this is another kind of, I'm guessing, telltale sign of what's going on or what's not happening here, right? Is, well, hold on. Oh, this is getting used. It's just not getting used in the style. So, hold on. Uh, do we have this checked out? I believe we do. Um, I want to look at... Let's go to that tabs item. Um, I believe it should get be getting set as an item container style. Um, but let's... Tab control, tab item. Yeah, so I believe this guy here has a, let's see, uh, setter property, right, item container style, yeah. I believe this is what we want. Uh, value, static, resource, material, design, Navigation rail tab. I don't remember what it's called. Um, tab item. Let's name it appropriately. It's just uh, confusing. Okay, so then this guy self close, right? I think what we're going to do is jump back here. Should this be getting set above so that the tabs don't all have to explicitly? Because you for for a lot of these controls, you can do this so that um, rather than on the demo having every single demo tab item uh, set this, you end up getting just that. So that's fine. Do, 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 do. Let's see, selected highlights border. Uh, let's see. Because in general, we should be stripping commented out code. Um, I'm, I'm guessing just looking at this here. It's interesting that this. interesting this limits which options are available um, interesting Yeah, because this is picking up color zone assist from the parent. Those are picking up the color zone assist from the parent.
parent control, the templated control. I don't think these are necessary because this is going to set border brush and background. Effectively overriding those. But if either of those properties are set directly on the control, they won't be overridden. That's probably expected. Uh, let's see. I think so. Let's do the same comment on the family. Is this uh, setter needed in general? Because there are a few places where we have to explicitly set um, the font. I believe the dialog host is one of them because once you go into a pop-up, um, ch you've changed visual trees and um, forwarding that through is problematic. In general, we want the font family to be uh, inherited. Uh, so we'll do that. Are these uh, setters needed, or is the attached properties that are being used on the color zone sufficient? Uh, if we need these, we should also expand them to handle the custom mode as well. Boom. All right, so more those. So I think from a code standpoint, those are the only things that I see initially in here that I would want. So I should highlight, hold on, there's a, feels like a spelling error here. Yeah, there's a just a typo here. Uh, I assume what's expected is selected highlight border, right? Uh, let's see. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. This is multi conditioning on if standard set some stuff up that's fine um, I think what I'm going to do is uh, so stuff is so uh, comments um, It would be great to pull the tab, the, let's see, generic tab control styles out uh, for now. Uh, uh, let's see, and submit as a Follow up PR. Um, styles are a uh, let's see. You'll need to fix the typo in all the lines on which it occurs. Been lurking for a while while working on something else. Looked up to see the typo repeated multiple lines. Thank you. Thank you, Musical Bookworm. Um, yes, you are absolutely correct. Sometimes I get very lazy and just comment on the one instance and assume people will fix them all. Um, but you are correct. It's probably good to call out. Uh, that's a lot of instances. I think what I I think what I will do is add a comment here uh, and put something along the lines of well as update usages of the name but thank you that is a that is a good call out there
Uh, so let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh, Chrome, you just like going slow. It would be, and I can't type, uh, and submit the follow-up PR, uh, hot button topics, need to um, get more approval before that portion merges. All right, so I'm not going to stress too much about the generic tab control ones. Um, let's see. Uh, some other, let's see. Uh, optional items that could also be done later because there are there are a few things that I think would be good I, again this is significantly better than what we've got which is nothing and I would rather it I'd rather ship something that's limited than than try and get the whole kitchen sink together so I'm gonna go back up to the top here on the spec and just kind of call out a few thingies Few thingies as we were working our way down, right? So the first one, uh, oh, floating action. This was called all floating action content. I think what we were going to do is change the demo one, right? The idea was that the demo was going to change to support to have to have the the name match the spec, right? Just so that if somebody's searching in from the material design page and comes across this, it would be nice if the, the names lined up. So I think what we're gonna do is come down here because one of the group box headers, which one was it, floating, uh, custom floating content. And I think what I would do, let's change that top level thingy. Uh, let's see, where is it? Floating, custom floating content. So I think, uh, let's see, I would change this header to better match the language in the material design spec. And then we'll just throw a suggestion of what, what we're actually talking about. Um, right. Boom, floating action button, right? Just so that it, just so that it lines up with what's being said here. Okay, the other one is, uh, let's see. So, uh, let's see, making, so let's see, we'll, we'll just, we'll do a list again. Making the designer, oh, come on, designer, they call it separator, divider, making the divider optional. Uh, uh, looks like we are using a drop shadow for it now. But the spec appears to just uh, be a simple line right I imagine a border or similar would would suffice but again these are maybe maybe I should I should bold the word optional right I don't I, I hate for people to feel like these are like requirements this is this is a list of things that would be nice to have not required not required uh, so let's see a uh, Include in demo app a sample using uh, text labels. Uh, ideally, this shows uh, defaults with text wrapping. Uh, it might be nice to also have the demo show the text label only appearing on the selected tab right so well, uh, very similar to what we saw so here's here's the one with text right uh, 
icons, which we've already got the icons working with the text labels. Great. Um, and then, uh, ooh, group alignment. Uh, I don't know. That's one of those extra things that may not be worth fighting with. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da -da. Divider. Let's see, there we go. Scaling, floating. Where did I see the uh, selected text labels? That's that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, I'll just paste that in. Select text labels. Example. All right. That way. That way, that one flows through nicely. Boom, boom, boom. Unlabeled icons, great. Uh, demo app sample uh, showing uh, badge control used in the tab item header. And I'm capitalizing that intentionally so that it lines up with the WPF property names. Uh, let's see, what else did we come across? There was that, there was that. Does it show a bottom? Uh, I thought it showed a bottom placement. Uh, placement. No, there was something about placement. Uh, that's right, bottom navigation. Demo app showing it used for bottom navigation. I think that's it, right? That seems simple. Obviously, the big one is this one and all the individual little comments in there. But overall, and I think I should probably leave with that. Um, is really great work. So this, because again, I don't want to, I don't want to leave the impression that this is somehow a bad job because this is, in my mind, very, very well done. So I know how much effort goes into building out a brand new control template from scratch. It's a lot of work. Um, this is this is awesome. In fact, I might even go as far as to say I kind of want to hold any three two release off to get this in. Uh, yeah. So this this gets this gets big kudos. So we'll we'll let that guy sit and simmer for a little bit. And then, let's see, do we left comments? Well, there was comments already left here, right? So I think just to be clear on this one, let's close this. I think I should go through uh, and put in, just to be clear, I agree with both of these comments here. Those are correct and accurate, and I don't feel like I need to add anything. Okay. Full theme editor. So this is another this is another big one, but this is also demo app only. So uh, 2021. Let's let's take a look at this. This one might be because this is demo app only. I'm I'm kind of inclined to just pull this in and turn it loose, right, and see what happens. Because that's kind of fun, and especially with demo app, it gives people a, a good opportunity to play with stuff. Because unfortunately, I have seen that people love to take the demo app and just straight copy code out of it, which I will say this. Do not copy the entirety of the demo app's code. The demo app is designed to show the breadth of what is possible. In any single app, you should not do all possible options. You should pick only the ones that make sense for you. So again, it's designed to show a breadth of possibilities. But I don't think any app should use all possibilities. You should really just pick on which one you want, right? Like it shows ways to do things with MVVM and code behind. And in general, you should probably be favoring one structure over the other. 
it's it's a bad idea to just do all the things. So uh, let's see, color palette theme editor. So this is kind of cool. Validation air color. It's interesting that this thing picked a. So if I do this, should this be showing me a hex value? It's cool that it gives me a demo of kind of a quick overlay of different ones. I kind of like that. This is clearly the alpha value. Right? I kind of want to interesting let's pick on this right so if we go here it's kind of cool kind of cool I like how that, that how that was structured so let's see here so this is new open save save as save as so I don't know straight up Start in my material design folder. Your own custom theme colors. So I'm also noticing there's clearly a missing closing paren on the file save dialog filter. <laughs> Sad, but not surprising that you have to warn people that their app shouldn't try to do everything. That's probably a clip-worthy speech that could be applied to most demo projects as well. Yeah, I know. It, it's actually so... The other common, and I'll just go and show this real quick because it happens so much, um, in the demo app, so, and actually I can, I can probably just show it on any of the other ones, right? Like the demo app uses the, uh, so I've got another library called Show Me the XAML that I built very, very intentionally to be able to have stuff like this so that people could easily copy the XAML. Um, and this gets you, mo usually most of the time, this is all you need to copy, right? But sometimes people go to the source code and they copy in the show me the XAML control as well and then are confused as to how to use it. It's like, no, no, you were supposed to take the stuff inside of it, not uh, like unless you're trying to show a pop-up with the XAML for other people to copy and paste in your app, that is not the control for you. It was very purpose-built for doing demo apps that contain XAML. That was, that was its purpose in life, nothing else. So it's one of those, occasionally I'll go and just query Stack Overflow for show me the XAML questions and mark them because <laughs> there's a couple of them that I've answered where it's, it's like the, the solution is delete it, you don't need it. Um, <laughs> thanks, needed a late night laugh. You're welcome sort of what I've needed at times too, especially after the day I've had. Uh, which is why I was doing pull requests because it was a long stressful day and I needed something to relax and shockingly reviewing pull requests is relaxing to me. I, I actually enjoy it. Um, let's see, I kind of, I kind of, so did we ever save it? So the save button could use some work because clearly you have to have it saved before that'll work. Uh, yes. Oh. Oh, maybe it is working and I just don't realize it. Okay, so let's let's change some colors, right? So let's make this like really obvious, uh, different, right? So, and then we will open our previous one. Seems to work. Cool. So I guess now my next question is what exactly did it save? Because I am very curious to know that because it created a XAML file for me. What exactly is in this XAML file? Uh, da -da -da, don't need that. Uh, don't need that either. Uh, so it creates... Oh, that's cool. 
So it's using the so rather than creating the XAML resources directly, it's actually going through the new color theming API. Design time true. I'm just I'm a little curious. I thought design time needed to be prefixed, but I could be wrong. What does this command do? Nothing. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I'm a little curious. Can I just take... So hypothetically, I want to use this now. So add existing item. Let's back up. Uh, I need you to be XAML files. I want to include this, right? So this comes into my demo app your own custom theme, right? So it's not, yeah, it's missing the prefixes. I wonder, like, it's clearly designed to be XAML, but there's markup issues. I'm wondering if this should be gener, I, I, I think, I'm trying to decide how I would want to use this, right? If it generated, if, if the expectation is that I can include the file in my project, or if I can copy and paste the code, based on the fact that it's generating like the XML definitions, my sort of intention was that I'd be able to just bring it in. I, that's clearly not the case, but if, and I'm, fairly confident if I copy and paste this in, right? So if rather than using the bundled theme, right, this thing allows for this, right? It brings in a custom base color theme. Uh, oh, but that's interesting. Custom base color theme. This is not actually a type, is it? So this is, no it is, and it has all of these things. So why am I not getting, why am I not getting IntelliSense on it? Is it because of that? That's probably it. The XML namespace is confusing it. I set that and now it goes. All right, so now I have my own custom theme with all of my stuff set. See, I'm wondering if it's better because it's going to need the namespace declaration. Uh, let's see, could not locate, oh, we may have just broken this with my earlier pull request, secondary hue mid brush. Uh, this has not been merged. This probably needs a rebase. Uh, let's see, so what is it looking for? Secondary hue mid brush, accent brush. So it tried to get the color and couldn't find any. So I guess that is the question, right? Is how is this expected to get used? So, oh, and design time is just a straight up bool. Okay, now I'm curious. Ah, too much stuff. Now I'm curious on the exact code changes in here. Okay, let's go and look because this is this is cool, but we've got some we've got some problems. All right, so this is demo app. Don't care for the moment. So I'm just going to ignore everything with the demo app because the demo app I'm I'm a little more free and just merging whatever because. As long as it runs and doesn't blow everything up, it's it's easy to iterate on, right? But the base changes. So let's see. If this file can be removed now. So because there was a 
previously it was done as a separate project and my comment at that time was this can be merged in uh, and I think what I can probably say is most of these uh, let's see let's change this up I believe this project can be removed now because the entire project in the code is not should not be needed if it's inside the demo app because it seemed better to just include it in the demo app rather than have a secondary thing because you put it in the demo app and it's at least um, something that's going to get deployed on a release if I have to add another thing to it that adds time So design time. So design time is only there so that it doesn't always get set. From dark. So this is a brand new. From dark from light I'm sort of surprised at this a little bit because okay so this is why there's a bit of an issue here is this is based on the other ones but it's its own separate thing I think there's there's an inheritance problem here uh, have a good evening the rest of your stream past midnight here and have to be awake in six hours I totally get that musical bookworm thanks for coming and hanging out happy coding Hopefully you got done whatever you were working on. Yeah, so the primary and secondary colors. Because there are extension methods on iTheme to be able to do some of this stuff. Where is this getting used? Is this being used? So from dark doesn't appear to get used. I'm guessing from light is probably in the same boat these have no protection modifiers which means the default of private will be applied which means they don't appear to get used in here um, yeah and this uh, clearly contains some extra stuff here uh, I think we want so have changes as part of this PR. We know if you need any help separating them. Let's see, so we'll throw that review comment on there. So I believe there's a okay, so this is this is the new thing in the bobber. Uh, but here we have, see there's a custom color theme, right? And I think this is what's, primary color, secondary color, right? Primary color, secondary color. These are very, very similar, and I'm, I'm, I can be very confident that these were largely based on each other. The difference being this thing has a design time flag. I'm curious, where is design time actually being manipulated? Find all references. Uh, let's see, in the demo. And part of the issue is the set theme method, right? Is this is This is calling theme create apply theme, which calls this set theme. I'm not entirely sure why this is bad. Unless this resource dictionary gets added somewhere, I don't know if it's uh, if this is if I don't know if this issue. I would expect this to actually cause any problems by causing set theme. So let's let's go back and leave a comment. Uh, so first of all, uh, should this 
class B uh, deriving from the existing uh, custom color theme class, right? Because that'll that'll somewhat solve some of these issues, right? Because a couple of these things will be there. Does that make sense? Well, let's see. Um, is this needed? I see that it uh, prevents calls to set theme, uh, but given that this resource dictionary shouldn't be loaded anywhere, I would not expect that to be a problem. So, because I would assume calling set theme is safe, it's just declaring some stuff. Um, these ones are data bindable. These, this one isn't. Um, let's see, method appears to be unused. Let's jump over and just confirm that, right? I, yeah, so Visual Studio confirms that it is also appears to be unused. So we'll, we'll add that. Uh, Method appears to be unused. We'll add that. And then let's see here. Okay, so I think those are really my only comments here. Uh, there was the. I guess I want to check the latest um, demo app and make sure it's still working. But I think that is probably fine there. There was the, um, so I want to look at the theme editor here and or here, right? So let's see, this is just brushes. That's leveraging brush color from light. is fine uh, let's see so this is ultimately how it's doing its data binding um, and this is fine this is old syntax because this this sort of runs you into the same problem of somebody could register or unregister between this check and this invocation of the property changed event but I'm I'm a little I'm a little less concerned about a little MVVM stuff here, especially since the from the look of this, these things are likely set once in the constructor and never again. Not not a big deal, right? Like I don't. The uh, let me rephrase. The name doesn't look to be set anywhere else. Color I assume is what gets set on binding when something changes, but that's. That's neither here nor there. That is a perfectly acceptable change. We're going to check that box. Uh, theme editor. Again, this thing struggles from the same same bit of stuff, but nothing, nothing I'm going to squawk at. So the question is, where is like that save box? Dialog closing. Open project. Uh, I believe this is the problem. This guy here should probably be, looks like just a little typo. Um, like that. I assume there's probably a, yeah, similar filter down here. Because this will fix the, actually I don't even think you need the semicolon. 
let's just test this real quick. I, I think you can get away without the semicolon altogether um, because you aren't doing a multi um, multiple filters. Uh, if you have multiple filters, I believe it's pipe separated. It might be semicolon separated. I don't fully remember. So this is inside of theme editor XAML. Let's just go down here and we'll 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 test my theory, right? So the open button shouldn't do that, and the save button shouldn't do that, right? I uh, restart. I'm I'm fairly confident in that. Uh, restart. Oh right, that is going to blow up because of the change I made here. So uh, undo all the things. All right, put that back. Okay, so let's go back to our theme editor. I'm going to turn it back to light theme for the moment because it looks better that way. I do want to fix our contrast problems in dark theme because those are very much bothering me. Okay, so save. Oh, because it's it's pipe delimited. <laughs> That's why. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So I think what we want is, uh, I, I just realized these are identical filters. Right, start out XAML, start out XAML, um, and it's the pipe that's causing it to fail, not the semicolon. Good uh, that I checked it. So the suggestion here should be just do it once. Theme editor, save. Uh, what is your problem? Should contain a description of the filter, followed by a vertical bar and the filter pattern. Right. Oh, I see. So that was ah uh, ha ha. That was the intent. Okay. So so it should look like that. All right. And let's go down, and we'll just once again test and confirm. Test and confirm. These filter things for the open and save file dialogs are fairly old. I think they harken all the way back to the in initial release. Possibly older than that. I should say possibly, probably, but based on Win32 things. Look at that. XAML files. XAML files. Open. XAML files. XAML files. Uh, okay, so it's the vertical pipe. So this is this is ultimately the suggestion here, right? Is these guys here should be Let's see, these guys should look something akin to this. Add review comment. Do, 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 and let's go grab the other one. Must have been up, not down. Uh, this one we want to edit. Update comment. Um, so I think what I want to do, because the interesting part is this thing writes, what is it doing? Rush color load from XAML. Hmm. This is sort of an interesting thing going with XML Writer. So XML Writer, XML Reader are, I think, some of the oldest um, XML APIs inside of .NET. So there are newer, faster options, specifically things with like XDocument, but the behavior is not the same. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
let's see, dot uh, close uh, and dot dispose should not be needed here due to the using statement above. So the the using statements guaranteed to call dispose and I know that dispose will have a it will implicitly close the stream. So the only thing that might need to go here um, is a flush if if we were getting like halfway written files. Um, but I believe uh, this using disposing of the XML writer will cause a flush to occur, which means that should be handled. So there's some naming things here. I'm a little, where did this guy come from? Oh, he must be named that in the XAML. Yuck. Um, but I'm a little less concerned with I'm trying to decide how much of this do you call out immediately. This is fixed later. So I think what we do is we just do suggested naming thing. We do the underscore in this library, and the default of a string is null, so it doesn't need to be defaulted to null. Uh, let's see here. It does concern me mildly that, well, I guess path. Uh, let's, let's, let's suggest a slightly better name because, uh, let's see, last saved. Um, existing XAML path, last saved path, existing file path. Yeah, uh, just something that's slightly more clear as to what the intent of this thing is. Uh, so some of these things in the XAML clearly need to be changed. So let's let's just start hunting some of these. I, I think I think I want to address some of the problems in here because again, I do I do think it we should look to get this merged. Oh, so you are you are big and ugly. Got it. So just show me X names, right? So this guy should be renamed, right? So rather than in general, we capitalize everything in our XAML. Let's say colored Oh, color. See, this is why it needs to be capitalized. Color, color editor dialog host, right? So do that. Again, obviously, this will this will cause major breaking changes. Editor dialog, but we'll we'll just address these guys here as we go, right? So color, editor, dialog, and review comment. Uh, let's see, we'll just do this, and I would suggest something more like color picker uh, the other thing is I I kind of like this page if nothing else as a a sample for uh, for how to build stuff out with this because this is this has some problems but it's not the they aren't horrible right the important part is that you ship your app And the better quality you ship, the better. But if you can't ship, it doesn't matter how good your quality is. Uh, let's see. Alpha slider. So we'll pick on that. And then we'll just keep picking on, keep picking on some of these. I probably... I don't know if I'm going to actually be able to finish a full review on this tonight, but I might continue poking at things. 
Um, I also might just say it's been a long day and it's time to sleep. Both are probable options. So let's see. I think I might uh, let's see I, uh, still need to do a more thorough review and I need to learn how to spell thorough Uh, let's see. Um, I left some initial comments. Um, one thought I had was should the generated XAML file uh, be usable? able to be um, referenced directly from a WPF application. Um, and so would require changing it to output a valid resource dictionary that could be referenced right like right now right now it's just generating um, an XML file and reading it in so like it like as is right this code would have to be I guess it would serve as an example for somebody wanting to know how to serialize and deserialize themes right which that is that has been something people have asked for and I've I've pushed back on including it in the library because it the um, a, a general principle is your serialization should be separate uh, from or I should say your storage should be separate from your actual uh, data objects and so I it's generally not a good idea to just straight up serialize your your business or theme objects, you should put them in some sort of data store thingy and, and save that, whatever that means, in a database, in a file, or whatever. Um, so given that, that is uh, where this is going. And I think, I think I might just leave it there. This is about quitting time, and I got that. I was hoping to comment on more issues, but Got a little distracted, but got comments on everything. More stuff to be merged soon. So far, it looks to be making good progress. So feels like a relaxing night to me. So thank you, everyone, for coming and hanging out. It's been fun. It's been great. Um, as always, if you've got questions, thoughts, of ideas of stuff you'd like to see me do on stream, let me know. Uh, either drop me a line on uh, one of the videos in a comment, or you can always catch me on Twitter. Uh, link's been hovering you know, right down there the whole time. So with that, I will say happy coding. See everyone next week.